So guys, welcome to this very short tutorial on the shorty ghetto, which consists of uh, the shorter blade which happens to be the scapula and our collar bone which is going to be the clavicle. So to begin with, our scapula is going to have two surfaces. It's going to have a costal surface which happens to be this one and you're going to have a dorsal surface which is this one. The dorsal surface will be divided into two by a spinous process. So you're going to have an infraspinous process by virtue of being below or inferior to the spine of the scapula. And you're going to have a supraspinous force, which is going to be this region here. These two forces, that is the supraspinous and the infraspinous force, will provide origin for two of the muscles of the rotator cuff, being the supraspinatus as well as the infraspinatus. Then, if we look at um, the coastal surface of the scapula, we would expect to see the subscapular force, which is this one, which is also going to provide origin for one of the rotator cuff muscles, which is going to be our subscapularis muscle. Then, uh, tracing it posteriorly, if you look at the spine of the scapula, it continues laterally as the acromion process. And if you look at the borders, this is going to be the medial border, then this is going to be the lateral border. The lateral border of the scapula is actually going to be thicker as compared to the medial border. And two muscles that are actually going to be attached from the lateral border will include the teres minor above and the teres major below, being their origin. Then if you look at the medial border, you'll expect to see insertion for the levator scapulae, the two rhomboids. And you also expect to see the insertion of the serratus anterior muscle, as well as um, going with the inferior angle of the scapula. And this scapula, in, in a normal intact body, its upper border will be at the, uh, at the level of the second rib, whilst the inferior border will be at the level of uh, the seventh, uh, the seventh rib, being your inferior angle, whilst the spine of the scapula will also be at the level of the third uh, rib. And if you also look at um, the features of the lung, you'd expect uh, one of the features to actually emerge from this uh, root of the spine of the scapula being uh, your oblique feature. Then tracing it laterally, you'd expect to see a clenoid cavity, which in this case it's labeled pink. And this clenoid cavity will provide um, sort of like insertion for the head of the humerus to form the shoulder joint complex. And notice it's not really uh, deep, so it's going to be deepened or further deepened by a fibrocartilaginous ring, which is going to actually be our clinoid labrum. Then inferior to the clinoid labrum or the clinoid cavity, you'd expect to see a tubercle. As well as above, you expect to see a supraclinoid tubercle. The supraclinoid tubercle will provide origin for the long head of the biceps, whilst the infraclinoid tubercle will provide origin uh, for the long head of the triceps. Then just above that, you expect to see the coracoid process, which in this case is this one, labeled in blue. The coracoid process will actually provide insertion for your pectoralis minor, whilst it will also provide origin for the short head of the biceps, as well as uh, your coracobrachialis muscle. Then if you look at this upper border, upper border is going to be notched at some point by the suprascapular notch. The suprascapular notch will also provide origin for one of the muscles of the neck, which is going to be our homohyoid muscles and it's going to be converted into a foramen by a ligament which is your suprascapular ligament and above this ligament you'd expect to see the suprascapular artery passing outside of the father the resultant foramen whilst within the foramen you'd expect a nerve which is going to be your suprascapular nerve then coming on to uh, your clavicle your collarbone which also takes part in the formation of the collarbone how you show the ghetto. The clavicle is going to be having two surfaces, a superior surface which is smooth and an inferior surface which is rough. And the inferior surface will actually be roughened by origin or rather the insertion of your subclavius muscle which will actually be originating from the first or cartilage. Then if you look at um, the lateral end, you'd expect to see two ligaments uh, or rather two parts of a ligament, your coraboclavicular ligament that will actually be inserted onto the coronary tubercle and the trapezoid ridge more laterally. And those will be a coronary portion and the trapezoid portion further roughening your inferior surface. Then you also expect to see muscle attachment on the superior surface of the superior surface of your clavicle to include your trapezius, pec page and the stenocleidal mastoid. Then if you look at this uh, clavicle, you're going to have uh, a medial of two thirds, which is going to actually be convex forward, which is this region. Then you have a lateral third, which is concave forward, which is this region. And the junction between this medial two thirds 
and the natural bed is where this bone is most commonly fractured because remember it acts, it acts as a strut to carry or transmit all the forces from the upper limb to the body meaning to say in people who are actually going to be obese you'd expect the clavicle to actually be shorter and wider then uh, more peculiar uh, features of the bone it lacks a metallic cavity then it's the only long bone in the body that lies uh, horizontal and it actually forms from intramembranous ossification except its most uh, lateral portions then if you look at the scapula clinically you can have a scapula that is actually formed within the neck that's um, a spraniel's deformity then you can also have uh, a wing scapula uh, arising from injury of the long thoracic nerve or slatus anterior mass so you have someone to press against uh, the window or the walls to actually have a scapula that bulges outwards like a bat